Welcome to Melbourne Victory members and fans. We're back. Football is back. How good is it? Uh, the Asian Champions League coming up and the Hyundai A-League not too far away. Big thank you to Metricon Homes and Dakin, Australia's number one air conditioner for their support for this show. And a big welcome to Michael Theo, Melbourne Victory legend on the desk once again. Theo, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Zappa. Pleasure to be here. Mate, how exciting is it? Uh, only a few days away from football back. Oh, it's fantastic. Obviously, the ACL uh, around the corner, followed shortly by the A-League. So excited to have football back on our TVs and hopefully in the stadium soon as well. Yeah, the players heading off to Qatar tomorrow to participate in the Asian Champions League. And we uh, thank Qatar Airways for getting the boys over there. We look forward to the Asian Champions League and we look forward to seeing you back at Amy Park and Marvel Stadium this season because the Melbourne Victory memberships are open. They're going well. 16,000 already signed up and the club is asking the Victory family of 15 years to stand as one this season and continue to your support for the club any way you can. We are expecting the gates to be open. Stadium capacity will be limited for home games, but early on, Becoming a member provides priority access to attend those games. It is a pay-as-you-go ticketing model. Jump on the website, go mvfc.com.au or give the club a call to become a member today. And we welcome Grant Brevner, the head coach, now to join us. Grant, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, Zappos. Good to see you, Michael. Likewise. How's the last few months treated you? Last time you were sat here, we were talking about uh, the season wrap-up and yep. looking forward. You've been a pretty busy coach. Yeah, look, it, it seems like only yesterday's up was that the season did wrap up. Um, and we have. We've been extremely busy. Um, we had a big job ahead of us to, to bring in some players and staff to this football club. Um, but obviously we'll go into a little bit more in detail and I feel we've done some good business. We look forward to seeing fans back. Brebs, it'll be... Uh, Great to see. Absolutely. Look, we're, uh, I think we're at 16,000, just ticked over 16,000 zappers. And, and Michael will tell you as well, we've been fortunate enough to play um, in front of these fans and members, members and fans, sorry, and, uh, you know, to, to sit with them as well. Uh, we've had the, the pleasure of sitting with these fans. And now for me to, to lead this football club on behalf of our members and fans is a huge privilege. Um, we all know what they mean to us. And, um, you know, we, we just urge for those that haven't renewed and for people that want to renew to jump on the telephone and give us that support because this year we want to make sure that everybody's behind us and moving in the right direction. Let's look at, have a look at some of the signings uh, you've made so far this season. Uh, Brebs, you've been uh, pretty busy. Tell us uh, a little bit about uh, this squad and some of the players uh, you've brought into this squad. We'll meet a few of them too a little bit later in our show. Absolutely. Look, um, I think we'll start at the back. Max Crocom. Um, He's come in um, from Brisbane. Um, we have obviously Matt Acton as uh, our goalkeeper in place already, but we felt we needed to bring in some competition. Um, Mac is obviously a little bit too old now to join us, but um, yeah, Max is going to come in and he's going to give us some real competition for places. And right the way through the squad, that was the premise. We wanted to bring in competition and make sports hard for players and, and earn their place. So Max, he does that coming into um, you know, the goalkeeper spot with Matt Acton. I was going to say, Brebs, as well, in terms of your visa players, it's super important you get them right, not just as players, their characters as well. And you've obviously been happy with the signing so far you've made and uh, obviously Callum McManaman being one of them. Can you tell us a bit more about him? Yeah, look, Callum, um, I think Callum was my first signing, to be honest. Um, he was somebody that um, I had known about for a long time. I had seen him play um, throughout the years. And um, he's somebody that excites me. He's somebody that's going to excite this football club and our members and fans. Um, and that's the type of player we've always tried to bring to this football club, Mackey. Um, because the benchmark and the measure will be, you know, what our fans appreciate and want to see. And if their bums are up off the seats, then we're doing the right thing. And of course, we want to win games, but we want to entertain along the way. And he does that. Jake Butterfield is another one that uh, you've signed from, from overseas. Uh, another player with great credentials, uh, yep. especially in his time in the English Championship. Yeah, we've always had a player like when we've been successful with Zappos, we've always had a player like Jacob. And in the back of my mind, you know, that was what it was. You know, we've had Kevin Musket, Carl Valeri, uh, Mark Milligan, somebody that, that goes in and, and works really hard for the team, does a lot of jobs that maybe, you know, the members and fans would would take for granted, um, but certainly when you sit in my position, you need somebody in there that's working extra hard for the team, breaking up tackles, winning the ball, and that doesn't do him justice because on the ball as well, he's a terrific footballer. He sees passes, he plays passes, and uh, he does tell me that he pops up with a goal as well. That box-to-box -box player. Absolutely. Yeah. 
And uh, obviously, back line, we've got a strength in there. And Nick Yantel, fantastic mm. to see him back at the club. Obviously, a championship uh, winner as well. Absolutely. And one thing, you know, that I've been really clear as well is I wanted an age bracket that's still youthful, young, and got years ahead of them. And Nick, again, fits that, that bracket. Um, Nick's been done the quarantine for 14 days, um, coming back from Korea. So we've been working through his fitness. Of course, our fans, members and fans know um, what qualities he has. And... Um, I'll be keen to make sure that he doesn't just come here and, and fit back into the squad, but comes here and becomes a leader. Because, you know, we've required, we've needed leaders in this football team. We missed it last year, and I've put it on his shoulders already that he's going to start driving players around him, not just thinking he's a young player anymore. Jake Brimo, I know we were excited uh, when he came back to Australia to join Perth Glory, but yeah. a lot of people uh, forget he's a Melbourne boy, yeah. and he's back home now. Uh, Tell us a bit about how you approached him. Were, did you, were, were you aware that uh, he was wanting to come back to Melbourne? Yes, yes, I did hear that he, he was wanting to come back to Melbourne. And any time I've watched Jake, he's really impressed me. Um, he's a talented, talented footballer. Um, and he's, he's of a fantastic age, he's 22. Um, he's still many years ahead of him. And, um, you know, he's had terrific coaching, terrific habits and behaviours from Liverpool that he's brought back to um, Australia. And a couple of days ago, we played Melbourne City. And I knew he was a good player, uh, Michael, but you know he was terrific on the day. And he's still got a lot under the bonnet that we want to expose, you know, in fitness, in terms of what else he can do on the ball. And um, he seems to be really enjoying his football. Another player that's had uh, a lot of overseas experience for a young player is Ben Falami, and mm. uh, a lot of uh, fans are excited about his signing. Yeah, look, young Ben's coming in. He's um, he's played nationally for Australia, uh, Ollie Roos. He's a, a club overseas as well, so he's coming here on loan. And, you know, he's coming here to help us, and he, we're going to help him. Um, he's a young player. Uh, I remember going out on loan myself um, from Man United to Hibernian. And, you know, you want to go and you want to show people how good you are. And he's going to come here, and, and that's the licence he's going to have. He's going to come here and show, you know, four corners of our stadium at Amy Park how good he is every week and let everybody sit up in Australia and notice how good Ben Falami is. Fantastic. And I was going to say, you mentioned Max Crocombe, the goalkeeper as mm. well. Um, how important is it, Brebs, to have two positions, two players fighting for those positions? Obviously, the goalkeeper as well. Um, it's super important, isn't it? Yeah, look, and I think, Mikey, you're, you're a better place to answer it than me, but um, I certainly remember back to when, you know, you played for this football club and, and Eugene Galakovic was, um, you know, your backup goalkeeper. And day in, day out, I'm sure, you know, he pushed you to be better. He pushed you to keep your spot. And, um, you know, ultimately, that's the name of the game. We never, well, I certainly don't want any comfort um, in my dressing room. And uh, I've, I've managed to fill two players for every position. And... Um, as I've always said, age is, is no barrier. So if you're playing well, if you're training well, you play. And Dylan Ryan's the other one, uh, yeah. another young defender. Yep. Uh, when you look at uh, the lineup and, and that defence, uh, I think you've, you've, you've said publicly that you're looking for another defender to make sure there's that competition. But what does Dylan Ryan expect to bring to the, to the squad? Again, another terrific footballer. Um, I spoke to Graham Arnold about him. He couldn't talk highly enough of him. Um, again, represented his country at uh, Oli Roos level and um, plays for a, a high profile club overseas. Um, he's going to come in, we've got Nick Ansel, we've got Aaron Anderson and of course, yes, I want to look and try and strengthen that area. But um, in my thoughts at the moment, you know, going to Qatar, um, you know, he's going to play a huge part in, in these four games. Um, and like I said, if, if our players remain fit, they keep their spots. Brebs, let's spend some time talking about the Asian Champions League because uh, tomorrow you head off to Doha, thanks to Qatar Airways uh, for looking after the squad heading over there. Uh, Sydney FC already over there, as we've seen in the media over the last few days. Perth Glory, of course, the other Australian team. So we look forward to seeing uh, some Australian teams participating. Uh, four games at minimum coming up uh, in 10 days. Let's not forget, uh, we've already had two games in the Asian Champions League with Melbourne Victory uh, securing one win, so three points uh, from those first two games. And the first two games, Brebs, are up against Beijing. Yeah, and uh, it's going to be a tough challenge for us. Um, of course it is. They're just coming off the back of their domestic season where um, they finished it off very strongly, Zappas. They've got some terrific, well, you know, hugely impressive footballers in their team. And, and it's going to be a real tough competition for us. Um, but it gives us an opportunity to go away, gel our squad, knit our squad, um, bring our squad together on and off the park and, um, you know, give these games a real good opportunity where we can go out against Beijing 
and try and express ourselves in one game. Um, in another game, we'll maybe sit a little bit tighter, um, try and nick something on the break. And then, of course, we have Shanghai and FC Seoul, where um, we need to obviously win those games. Mm. Tell us a little bit about uh, your approach. Uh, let's look, look at the squad firstly, because the squad in itself uh, is pretty much at full strength, except for Robbie Cruz, who yes. uh, is still recovering from his injury. Absolutely. Look, um, yeah, we, we, we know where Robbie's at. And just to touch on Robbie for, for everybody watching at home, Robbie's well ahead of schedule. Um, he's working really hard in his off-field programme. Um, and we're really looking forward to having him back into the squad. Um, but yeah, we're going to take two teams over to Qatar, Zappas. Um, it's going to be a, a blend of experience and youth. Um, and, uh, you know, every, every day will be a new challenge in terms of what team's starting. We, of course, we've projected what we would like to play, um, but that may change when we get there. Um, what we do know is that first game is going to be a real test for us. Um, the second game we will recover, we will look at what we have. Um, and again, the third game, the fourth game, Shanghai, FC Seoul, they are the games we need to win to progress from this group. How important is it, Bruce, to manage loads? Obviously, you've got one eye on the ACL, but shortly after the A-League campaign starts, and you've, you, you, I'm assuming you're going to use this as a jelling, obviously, that the new boys are arriving, so they can learn about each other on and off the field and obviously work on patterns and whatnot. How important is it to use this ACL campaign to get ready for the A-League and hit the ground running? Um, it's a great question, Michael, because we, in many ways, we are approaching a couple of the games maybe differently to how we would approach the A-League campaign. So, you know, while a lot of teams that are staying back in Australia can look towards the A-League campaign and, you know, whether it's a high press, we've got to play um, a, a, an Asian Champions League game against a, a top opponent. And, um, you know, it would be... Uh, in the past, you know, we've played against top teams, we've tried to go out there and press them, we've tried to play a high line and um, we've been punished. So we've got to find the right balance in those two games, those early two games against Beijing and um, work them out very quickly. We'll have a plan A and plan B and, um, you know, we'll hopefully get something out of those games. But yes, it has been a challenge, but one that we're enjoying. And uh, obviously you want to be at home for Christmas, but there'd be part of you that won't want to be home at Christmas because if you're not home at Christmas, it means you've advanced deep into the tournament. Absolutely, Zappas. Look, it's, um, it's a privilege to coach in this tournament. It's a privilege to go over and play in this tournament. Um, you know, if I'm sitting in a, a hotel room in Qatar over Christmas, then that means we're doing a good job. Of course, you know, it's going to be difficult for us, but... Um, we would not be going to this competition if we didn't want to go out of the group. I spoke to the players about it. We're preparing for um, the longest stay we can. Um, and regardless of when we come back, we want to make sure that we're putting on a show for everybody back home in Australia that's following us and supporting us. Uh, I reckon there are nine other clubs who'd love to be in uh, your shoes uh, right about now, uh, heading over to Qatar to play some very serious football. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, boys. Thank you. I look forward to working with you throughout the season. Yeah, we look forward to it as well. Let's now hear from a couple of the players who will be part of this Asian Champions League squad. Um, basically, um, Melbourne Victory got in contact with uh, my agent and they just let him know that they were interested in bringing me over and interested in um, getting me uh, to be a part of the project over there. And basically from there, uh, Brebs gave me a call and he, he ran me through all the ideas that he wanted to implement into our uh, victory and um, where I would fit into those ideas. And yeah, basically it just went from there. I really liked the way um, he, he spoke about it and, and all his plans that he set out for um, the victory for, uh, for the new season. So from there, it was, it was quite easy to join. He sees me as a striker, which is great. I see myself as a striker. I can play anywhere across the front, but as a striker specifically. So that was good to, um, to know that he has faith in me to uh, lead the line. And um, as a team, he just wants Melbourne Victory to just play good football, entertaining football and um, get results ultimately is, is the goal. And yeah, aside from that, entertain the fans. So I really like the way that he set it out to me. And yeah, it's a no brainer. I think I'll bring uh, goals. Obviously, that's the most important one. Um, I like to think I can hold the ball up really well, bring others into play and then when I get the ball and there's a bit of space for me to turn, I think I can, um, I can run at defenders, open up spaces for others and create chances for myself. I'm really excited to join this club. Uh, massive team in Australia. Um, looking forward to uh, Brebsy's ideas and the, the plan for this season to get back up on the, on the top of the table. Um, spoke to him about the, the roles that I'll be playing in the team and um, 
I'm looking really, I'm, I'm really excited for it. I think I'll bring uh, composure at the back, you know, bringing the ball out and uh, controlling the tempo of the game. Um, very good in my aerial duels. I think uh, I'll win a lot of challenges there. And um, yeah, switching the play and, and just overall leadership and good defending. One of the biggest teams in the A-League and um, yeah, it's got a massive uh, fan base. Um, you know, a lot of good players have come to and out of uh, Melbourne Victory. And uh, yeah, just looking forward to be added to one of those players. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing uh, those two young men. What, what I've loved about some of the recruitment uh, this year as well is uh, some of those players, uh, Michael, who are playing some international football uh, with Graham Arnold in the under-23s and uh, they'll get a big opportunity to play in this Asian Champions League. As I mentioned earlier, a couple of games already into this tournament, Melbourne victory scoring a, a, a victory against Chiang Rai, the side from uh, Thailand, uh, early on. And so we enter the competition with three points uh, after two games. And it's evenly spread, this group. Uh, it's wide open and uh, a little bit hard to predict because so many different clubs are coming from different parts of their season. And, uh, you know, it's something we're used to in the Champions League because the seasons up until now really haven't aligned. Of course, and uh, as you said, Zappa, it's quietly you know, poised three points each. Um, you know, Brebs has uh, earmarked the first game against Beijing FC. Obviously, we play them back to back, so depending on how that game goes, um, you know, we find ourselves in a great position to progress in the tournament. But it's, it's a fantastic opportunity for the guys, the new boys to gel. Um, just touched on there about the, you know, the youth um, internationals, they're coming back. Great opportunity for them to obviously do well and give themselves confidence to really hit the ground in terms of the A League. But what a, you're on the world stage here in you know, Qatar playing against fantastic uh, opposition. And for me, that's the best uh, type of training to obviously get ready for, prepare for the A-League. We know it's hard to uh, secure wins in the Asian Champions League, but Melbourne Victory did it, uh, I think it was almost nine months ago, Michael, in that game against Chiang Rai. Uh, it seems like uh, years ago now, but uh, quite a few changes to the squad. But this is precious. Getting three points at home is what you want to do when you're playing uh, in Asia. It's so critical. You have to win your home games um, and obviously not get beat. And if you can pinch a result away from home, always helps. But um, yeah, this is obviously the first game of the ACL campaign. To get that 1-0 victory, obviously Toivonen scoring there for us from the penalty spot, it uh, yeah, just helped start the uh, campaign on a good note. Um, we're unlucky as well against Sol Zappo. I remember watching that game even though yeah. it seems like a lifetime ago. We played well and unfortunately we lost 1-0. So the guys can take confidence but um, obviously having spoken to Grant just then and watching him train as well, it's about preparing, preparing right, trying to enforce, you know, in terms of game plan, mentality. Um, he, he'll be wanting to focus on that and hopefully seeing that out on the pitch when they play quality opposition. Yeah, we know how hard it is uh, to travel to places like Seoul and, and get a result. But let's not forget uh, with FC Seoul, uh, they're coachless at the moment, Michael. Uh, they offered Graham Arnold a job a few weeks ago. He said no, he was sticking with the Socceroos. So they've had a poor season in the K-League. They're on the, in the bottom half of the, season, uh, of the ladder. Uh, so they'll be uh, in between. At the, I, I think there's a real opportunity for Melbourne Victory to take advantage. There is. It's a great time to play him. Um, obviously, there's a lot of uncertainty. And as a player as well, I'm an ex-player myself, uh, you know, when you haven't got a coach there, it's hard. You don't know who you're playing for and whatnot. Um, as you mentioned, they're obviously not doing well in their season. But who knows? Will they turn their attention to the ACL and wanting to do well there? Um, we do play them the last game of the uh, tournament. So we'll know where we stand uh, by that stage. But they are a quality opposition and a Again, a great opportunity for our boys to be put up against you know, a fantastic Asian side. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to how the guys uh, go there. I'm sure we'll uh, you know, perform exceptionally well and uh, really, really, really get going for the A-League as well. Yeah, we love a bit of uh, midweek football that the Asian Champions League uh, presents us with. And uh, one of the players who will be starring for Melbourne Victory, no doubt, in the Asian Champions League campaign will be uh, Callum McMillan, and he's our new signing. Let's have a look at some of his highlights before he joins us at the desk. Yeah, what a great uh, highlights reel that is. And I'm sure Melbourne Victory fans are going to see plenty more of that this season. Callum, welcome to the desk. 
Thank you. Good to be More here. than a decade playing at uh, the Premier League and the Championship and uh, great to see you here. What are your first impressions? I'm loving it at the moment. Um, yeah, I feel settled already. I've been here for about 10 days now. The lads have been brilliant, the staff have been brilliant, so really enjoying it to be honest. Obviously I was in quarantine for two weeks in Perth, which wasn't ideal, but now I've got through that, I'm enjoying it, yeah. yeah. And Callum, I was going to say, how have you found the interaction with the boys? Is it very different back to the UK? They're very welcoming here. And... Um, I thought it was going to be, to be honest. But no, it's just, yep. it's pretty similar. Obviously, the lads have been very friendly, like, all along. So as soon as I come in the first day, I felt like, like I went out for food on the first day with a few of the lads. So I feel, I feel settled and I feel, I feel comfortable already. You uh, played uh, in a match uh, behind closed doors on Monday against Melbourne City at uh, at Marvel Stadium, a yeah. big stadium. How did, how did you find your first hit out? Yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. I think I think we done all right. I think we held our own with a pretty new squad. Um, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a big pitch, but no, it was good. Stadium's brilliant. Well, early days, but what type of role do you do you think you'll be playing? Uh, you can play in obviously a number of positions out wide or. Um, centrally as well? Yeah, I think I'll be on, on the wing uh, mostly, but um, as I say, I can play anywhere up the top, so in the front three, so obviously the higher up the pitch, the more comfortable I am. And Callum, you come to Melbourne Victory at a fantastic age, 29, is probably the peak of your powers. What was the driving force behind that? Was it something you just wanted to change in scenery? Obviously spent a lot of time in the UK. Um, a bit of everything, to be honest. Uh, Grant obviously played, played a massive part in, uh, in bringing me here, he was on the phone a lot to me and as soon as I spoke to him I got good vibes. So I wanted to, I wanted to go for it and try something different. I've played in England for the last 10, 12 years and kind of the same, the same standard, the same level. I wanted a change, I wanted something different and I think this is the perfect opportunity for me. You are obviously heading over to the Asian Champions League at an interesting time in the preparation for the season. What are your, your thoughts and hopes for the next few weeks? Yeah, no, um, I can't wait. Um, Obviously, we've got. I don't think we've got any anything to lose. We've got a new 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 team, new set of lads. I think we just go and get after the teams and and see what see what we can do. Obviously, it's still pre-season for us, so it's not going to be easy. But yeah, as I say, I don't think we've got anything to lose. So let's just go for it. Now, uh, Jake Brimmer spent some time at Liverpool with that accent. I'd imagine you might have <laughs> something in common. Have you uh, have you spoken to Jake a little bit? Yeah, I've already spoken to him about Liverpool. Yeah, he, he said he liked it. He said it's a good city, so I was happy with that. It's a good start. Yeah, very um, good. He's made a, a very good friend already. Uh, thanks for joining us and all the best yeah. with this season. OK, thank you. All right, uh, let's uh, have a look at uh, one, some of the highlights now of uh, an ex-teammate of this man, two years in a row, Jacob Butterfield. Uh, let's uh, have a look now. Well, back from hotel quarantine and straight into the Victory TV studios. Jacob, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good to be here. Hey, that uh, beard's been growing over a few years by the looks of things. No, this is just, just two weeks. <laughs> so, and, you know, I'm fresh off the plane, so I haven't had a chance to uh, get to the barbers and get neatened up, so this is how I'm looking. Very good. So you've only been in town a couple of days. You've uh, just come out of hotel quarantine in Sydney and then you're about to jump on a plane again to uh, head over to Qatar. Yeah, yeah, so I'm just... You worked that out well, I'm just getting them air miles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, yeah, there's as many flights as possible, so... Yeah, it's, um, it's just the way it's worked. The, I mean, with the COVID, things have been complicated and not straightforward and a lot going on, so we, we were just, um, you know, this is the way it's all worked out, so... But it's a good thing. I, I, get, I get to be here for a few days um, before we go there and, and um, meet everybody and... Um, just settle down a little bit in the environment, so it's going to be good. And how did you find that whole process of the hotel quarantine, trying to keep fit? <laughs> Obviously, it's the middle of our pre-season. You were ticking yeah. over, Jacob? Yeah, I was ticking over, yeah. So the club got an exercise bike in the room. Um, so I was doing that twice a day and, and, and trying to do it as much as I could and uh, going on the internet and trying to get body weight workout, stuff like that. Trying to do what I could because I wanted to be in the best shape as I could to get straight on the grass and... Um, 
and not be too far behind. So, I so feel like us, what, what are your expectations in terms of Asian Champions League and, and match fitness? Uh, you're obviously you're heading over there, expecting to play some football. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, I, I'll be I'll be fine. Um, you know, I'm naturally quite fit. Um, I th I've, you know, you, you can't you can't be football ready without playing football. You know, but you can you can have a good base level of fitness, which I think I'm going to have. Um, so you know, just just getting on the grass and getting that playing football as much as possible before the games start um, next week and give myself the best chance. I was going to say, Jacob, too, you guys would be short to, you know, short pre-seasons in the UK. It's normally four to five weeks, so I'm sure you guys will adjust well. Um, similar to Callum, what was the reasoning behind this adventure? Obviously, the other side of the world, Melbourne victory. What was the decision-making behind that and obviously wanting to come to the club? Um, well, there's two, two aspects, really. Firstly, the, when Melbourne uh, victory became an option for me, it was really a no-brainer there. The, the size of the club is just fantastic um, and also with that the conversations with the manager and um, you just made me feel really wanted and um, just got me excited that this was the right club for me at this at this stage. The second part was that before this that I'd actually felt like I wanted this kind of opportunity and this sort of <coughs> new experience in my career and you know, after playing for so long in, in England and uh, you know, racking up a lot of games and a lot of experience there. Just, um, I felt like I, w I was looking for this sort of thing. And then, you know, thankfully, Melbourne victory, you know, came up as an option, so I jumped at it. Over 300 games uh, in the championship. Middl Middlesbrough was one of your clubs. A few uh, famous Aussies have gone through uh, the uh, the halls there. Yeah. Mark Viduka being one of them, a Melbourneian. Uh, mm. I'd imagine he's still held in very high regard at the club. Yeah, he is, yeah. And throughout... Um, Throughout English football, obviously his time at Leeds as well, he was a brilliant player. So, yeah, I didn't know he was from Melbourne actually. He is, yeah, yeah. yeah he, he spends a bit of time player. here, so we might have to organise a reunion. Oh yeah, yeah, very good. good. We look forward to seeing you on the park. Brev's told us you're going to work all day, up and down, box <laughs> to box. So uh, we'll, we look forward to you seeing doing all that uh, that work. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'll do my best. Good luck in uh, in Qatar, and thanks for joining us today. Thanks. All right, another new signing for Melbourne Victory is uh, on the sideline. Steve Keane is the assistant manager. Steve, welcome to Melbourne. It's been uh, quite a journey to get here. Um, just talk us through that. Uh, well, yeah, it's been a journey because I had uh, obviously the, the flight into Perth and then I'd done my 14 days quarantine in Perth and then uh, managed to get down last night and arrived in Melbourne and then straight on the grass today. So it's great to get out and be working with the staff and with the players and, and, and actually seeing what we've got. You've uh, come across Brebsey before in the UK. Um, just talk us through your previous experience with him. Yeah, it was it was way back. It was late 90s. Uh, both Jeff and Brebs at, at Reading. Uh, I was at Reading Football Club as academy director then. I was first team coach during Brebs' time there as a player. So we, we go back a long way. And uh, it, was, it was great when he, he called me up and we had a, a long chat on the phone. Uh, and it was an easy yes when I knew that the role that he wanted me to play and come and, and help the, the staff and help the, the players. So, yeah, really looking forward to getting started. Um, you talk about that role and um, how are you going to help uh, Brebsey and the rest of the coaching staff, do you think? I think it's just, uh, you know, passing on my experience. You know, I've, I've been coaching a long time. So my job is going to be, first of all, to help the players. Um, you know, if I can help as well, with the experience I have and help the staff. Uh, I think, you know, Brebs has he, assembled a very good staff uh, and we're here to support the players. That's, that's our primary function. And, um, you know, what I've seen today in the practice match, you know, we're making great strides to, to be ready not only for the Champions League, but more importantly for the A-League. Uh, you had a, your first look at that practice match this morning, as you say. Uh, what's your first impressions of the club and the players overall? Well, first impressions of the club, you know, I'm very impressed with what, what we have. You know, when I'm, I spoke on a Zoom call with the directors, the chairman and the rest of the staff a number of weeks ago, first of all, I was pretty blown away by the welcome that, that we received, not only for ourselves, the, the new players and also the wives. Uh, the, the club were very, very warm and welcome us here. Uh, and now, you know, my first impression of what I've seen today is 
you know, we're, we're going to be we're going to be good. We're going to be very competitive this season. Any particular players that took uh, took no, your eye? Too, it's too early for me to say. I don't really know the individuals yet. You know, I've been watching from afar from the drone. The staff's been sending me the the, the footage of every training session, but you know, it's it's too early to say. I, I just think that you know, like I said, we're here we're here to help the players and everyone from the youngest to the oldest. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting started. Yeah, great for Grant Brebner, a new coach at senior level, to have the experience of Steve Keane with him on the sideline this year. Michael, let's take a look now at the W League as we preview the season. For the first time in the history of the A League, the W League will kick off at the same time as the A League on the 27th of December. Of course, we don't have fixtures yet for neither the A League or the W League, but great that the women's competition kicks off at the same time and we'll get uh, plenty of airtime over the next few months. Yeah, exactly right, Zappa. And also, generally, there's a few doubleheaders that are thrown in there, so yep. it'll be great for our members and supporters to obviously uh, support the female and then obviously catch the A-League uh, game as well. But, um, yeah, we've made some uh, great signings and uh, hopefully the girls are ready to go and hit the ground running uh, come December. Yeah, let's have a look at some of those signings. Still early days and uh, always a difficult task, signing players uh, who are all over the world looking to come back home. But Catherine Zimmerman is one of them. She's a du dual NPLW golden boot and gold medal winner. She's from uh, the United States and uh, arrives after a successful season with uh, Calder United. Uh, one of the best uh, in the W League. Uh, plenty of goals, Michael. Uh, 78 goals in 56 appearances, Zappa. So that's some um, strike rate. So we're we'll looking forward to having Catherine on board and obviously uh, playing a critical part in the pointy end of the pitch. So, um, yeah, welcome her aboard and a fantastic signing. Kayla Morrison uh, is another big signing from overseas. Uh, currently playing from the, for Swedish club uh, Moron Bok Club, and she'll arrive uh, after that comp competition finish finishes. But uh, she's uh, a consistent performer who doesn't miss a game. She's uh, very, very solid. And that's what you want. Um, yeah, she's played 83 consecutive games uh, over there. She's a defender, so um, yeah, you need someone that's going to be there, uh, reassuring that back line, steady. Um, so yeah, that's another great acquisition for the club as well. Claudia Bunj is another one who's been signed a New Zealand international, someone who impressed last season as well, a central defender from the New Zealand top tier. Yeah, and again, Jeff Hopkins, I think, has done incredibly well. Um, obviously, getting all these uh, ladies uh, in, welcome to the club. Um, fantastic signing, adds depth to our defence as well, so I'm sure Claudia will uh, do extremely well for the club as well. Yeah, female young player of the year in New Zealand uh, for 2020. We've run out of time, Michael. Uh, we're excited about the football returning. The Asian Champions League is upon us. The A-League season isn't too far away, as is the W season. Uh, don't forget, if you're a member of the Melbourne Victory Football Club, 16,000 so far and looking to break another record again this year. It'll be a different year, but it'll be a better year than last year because uh, we'll have fans back in the stadium. We look forward to seeing you back at Amy Park. Don't forget to get on board for the Melbourne Victory this year and uh, get on to the membership website and it will be great to see fans back. Before I let you go, how do you think the Asian Champions League will go for the players coming up to Qatar in a few days? It's a hectic schedule. They don't uh, know each other that well. They haven't played a lot of football. A lot of unknowns. There are, but um, great opportunity. Obviously, you know, going away for 10 days, playing four games, there'll be plenty of rotations. Um, Grant's obviously alluded to the managing minutes and whatnot. Um, but again, it's, for me, it's can we play the victory way? Um, what Grant and the, the coaches have been working on in the pre-season, can they implement that against fantastic opposition over in Asia? Um, I think we'll do well. Hopefully we progress through to the group out of the group stage. But um, for me, it's all about gearing up for the A-League. And this is a stepping stone. And I suppose getting that winning mentality that Grant's trying to create. Because the reality is when you play for this great club, um, you're expected to win games and play a certain style. So I think uh, the ACL is a perfect um, you know, uh, lead up into the A-League and I think we'll do extremely well. Yeah, we look forward to watching Melbourne Victory in action in Asia's biggest football competition. We thank our partners once again, Metricon Homes, Dakin, Australia's number one air conditioner. Don't forget you can watch all the games of the Asian Champions League on the My Football app, KO and Fox Sports as well. From me, Michael Zapponi and Michael Theo, Thank you for tuning in and all the best to Melbourne Victory as they head into the new season.